Do you have a question for Peter? I, I have many. Um, but let me start with the process of this unfolding. Now, I'm a big believer in technology, great fan of humanity, et cetera, et cetera. But do you actually see this unfolding fast enough to prevent the crisis from actually getting out of control? I'm not saying we won't get where you're saying in the end, but what's the path like to get there? So, unfortunately, I have very little confidence in governments and large corporations. I do have extraordinary confidence in, in the innovators that are out there. And literally what we've seen is breakthroughs that are fundamental in nature, that change everything. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where they are, who they are, but I do know that the more empowered individuals that we have on this planet, the better connected they are, like that woman in Manchester, England, that gives me confidence. What's your question for Paul? Every century, people are worried that they've got the biggest problems in the world, mm -hmm. that this is the problem that's going to destroy them. And yet we have consistently overcome those problems. Mm. Why not now? The, the very simple difference is the Earth wasn't full before. There was actually space for us to do it. The difference now is that we actually have to get past this incredible size of the economy. I mean, I mean and we just say, if you don't have faith in governments and corporations, well, guess who's running the world right now? So we have to get them out of the way, and that's not going to happen smoothly. And that's the issue to me, is the, the transition. You know, it's like the, the billions of poor people in China, India and Africa don't want an iTunes store, right? They want cars and chickens and milk and houses and TVs. They want stuff. And yes, what you're saying will get us there, I think, by the end of this century. But in the process of them getting that stuff, there's going to be an almighty crash as the physical limits come up against you know, our, our, our desires. Paul, when, um, when, I, when I flew here from New York last week, I flew over mountains and vast open fields. And so, I'm like, it didn't look mm. like the earth was full. What, what, <laughs> is, isn't, isn't your statement kind of a, a lack of imagination about what human ingenuity could do with that space. Sure. Look, I, again, it's not, as I said in my talk, it's not that we don't have the capacity to do it. It's not that it's not conceptually possible, right? It's not that there isn't enough resources or space or whatever to feed us all and do all that stuff. The question is to go from here to there. If you look at the science, the science says we're depleting resources at a rate 50% faster than they're, being, they're available. Right? And that's just economics, it's physics, it's basic science. So again, not what's possible, but we've got to move the oil industry out of the way in 20 years, and the coal industry. When these guys aren't going to say, oh, sorry, yep, you're right, you had a better idea, bye. <laughs> They're going to say, come on. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, Peter, you, you expressed your, your concern about the, the ability of governments to do it. Isn't, isn't that the possible stake in the heart of, of your idea, that you've got all, this, all these ideas are there, but the complexity of the world that we're in and the kind of human psychological quirks that we have where people don't always act in their long-term interests, or certainly groups of people don't always seem to, that that could kill us? So, I'm not positing that we're going to have to depend on using some technology that's more expensive. No, I'm positing actually the creation of technologies, you know, let's use Dean Kamen's example of something that produces water at two cents a liter, which is actually cheaper than it costs to move the water in the first place. Mm. So solar, if we're able, actually able to bring it down in price, we're going to hear about battery technology breakthroughs. We have extraordinary technology coming online, and I would posit that the fact that the earth is full and we're, we are going to peak and as we make a healthier and better educated populace that's the one thing we know that drives population rates mm -hmm. down so if we want to make the earth less full the best thing we can do is educate and make people the healthiest we possibly can on this planet Which... but their additional minds plugged in is the greatest hope I believe we have mm -hmm. for solving this problem but, but your, your hope is undermining his fear which means that nothing's going to get done <laughs> Look, this is, this is a serious question because, you know, denial is very comforting, right? We make us feel much better if we believe it won't be bad. And my point is that I'm completely with you on optimism and technology and our capacity, right? But if we believe that will prevent the crisis, we won't be ready for the crisis. And when the crisis comes, which it will come, we'll panic. 
as opposed to saying, OK, we saw it coming, it's time to sort of go to war with that technology and that, that capacity. Let, let me say one thing. I don't want to be sitting here and denying that we have problems. Mm -hmm. No question no, no, at sure. all. In fact, we're in the middle of designing X prizes about CO2 carbon mm -hmm. capture. That's not the issue. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is that the ability to solve the problems isn't going to sit in the White House and it isn't going to sit in a, in a top CEO. It's going to sit with breakthroughs coming out of the people in this audience that we need to keep an eye out for and then go and yeah, deploy. Sure. But, so so I, would, I would like to just get a quick show, show of hands here. This is not about who gave the better talk. This is about... I, I mean, I'm just really curious where the spectrum of Ted's um, uh, opinion is. Are you, in your head, not your heart, in your head, are you more inclined to the Peter view of the world or the Paul view of the world? <laughs> Peter. Yeah. Yeah. And Paul. Yeah. Holy cow, it's very nearly 50-50. It might be 55-45. This is going to be a big conversation all this week and, frankly, probably for the rest of our lives. It's a very big deal. I really, truly thank, thank both of you, you. hugely for starting it off.